Hello, my name is Jara and today I'll be doing a nursing skill called the uh, um, suctioning of nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal um, airways. So for this kind of procedure, you would like to gather your equipment. So the equipments that I'll be using for this procedure will be a wall suction, which I have it here, or a portable suction. Some facilities have both. So just, um, you know, um, get whatever you need. Um, and then the sterile um suction tubing kit so usually in this kit it is wrapped and it has a sterile gloves it has a sterile tubing and also a sterile um disposable container so for the tubing you would like to to use um according to the size that you need for the patient if your patient is an adult you would like to use um, a size 10f to 16f if it's an infant you would like to use um, a size 5f to 6f and if it's um, a, if it's an uh, children you would like to use between 6 to 10f um, size tubing and then um, you would like to get your goggles your disposable towel or disposable pad or towel um, sterile water um, water soluble lubricant <clears throat> your mask and um, appropriate PPE if needed and then um, a disposable gloves as well you would like to prepare that one so first you would like to gather all your equipment in the room and then you would like to perform your hand hygiene technique wash your hands and dry it um, and then after that you would like to identify yourself identify the patient as well the two identifiers is the full name and the date of birth you can check with the guardian if the patient is an infant um, just verify and also the band on their um or wrist or their foot and then um you know provide privacy for the patient that way they'll feel more, more comfortable when you're doing this procedure so close the doors and the curtain and then um <clears throat> you verify why you need the suctioning for this patient because um sometimes the patients are in pain you would like to give them some pain um pain medication before doing this procedure so just verify just in case um you know they need additional uh, medication or um, you know um, what kind of what kind of suctioning you're going to be doing for this uh, patient and then um, you would like to explain the reason why you're doing this procedure especially um, is if the patient is conscious um, that way you know they know what you're doing to them sometimes this is uncomfortable you would like to get them ready um, even if the patient is unconscious or uh, or an or is not alert you would still want to explain this procedure for them and then um after that you would like to adjust the bed according to your um, workable height which is the elbow height so i adjusted my bed um, on my elbow height and then um just adjust the um <clears throat> and then you know just get your disposable towel and then just put it on the patient's chest just in case you know any spillage or anything that's um might contaminate their clothing or you know everywhere so um you would like that getting ready to get ready and then just adjust the the gauge of the wall suction so usually for the wall suction um if the patient is an adult you would like to um, gauge it according to you know the age of the patient so for an adult you would like to set it in um between 100 to 120 mmhg for a neonate, you would like to set it between um, 60 to 80 um, mmHg. And then for infants and children, it's between 80 to 100. And um, adolescent is between 80 to 120. So set that up accordingly. Um, if you have a portable unit, then it's a different gauge, but um, it's the same concept. For an adult, it's between 10 to 15. Um, for neonate, it's between 6 to 8, and then infant, children, and adolescent is between 8 to 10. So just adjust that correctly on your um, portable suction. And then after that, you would like to put some disposable gloves. So you would check, um, that way you could check and occlude the suction tubing if it's working. So you put that pressure. In my case, it's a neonate. Um, I'll just put 60 to 80 mmHg. And then the tubing, just occlude it and see if it's uh, working. And then after that, you would like to open your sterile kit. So for your sterile kit, you would like to open it. 
let's just say this is a package just um, make sure that you prepare a sterile field on your table and then just drop it there that way you don't contaminate um, any of the contents of the sterile kit and then um, just um, you know get your soluble water soluble lubricant you don't want to put it you don't want to put the whole container on that sterile field because this is not sterile so just drop some and then um, that way you know it's ready for you and then after that you would like to check on the oxygen um, supplement for your patient because um, you want to have that ready to prevent hypoxemia so just check if it's working and then just um, give it to them for supplement and then um, after that you would like to place your uh, face shield or your goggles So you'd like to place your goggles, your mask. And then um, just put on your sterile glove. So get that sterile glove, do a septic technique. And then using your dominant hand, um, so your dominant hand will remain sterile while your non-dominant hand will be your clean. So for your sterile, so the, the dominant hand, you would like to get your catheter. So your, your catheter, you would like to hook it up, get your non-dominant hand to the tubing on the wall. So once you hook that up, you would like to, um, you know, Moisten that character. So moisten your character, um, put some sterile water, that way it's more flexible and then just moisten it up. Um, and then encourage your patient to take deep breaths. In my case, it's a uni. So just, um, you know, check their breathing and see if um, um, they're, um, you know, just let them take some deep breaths. And then um, just apply um, lubricant um, two to three inches on this tubing. So just put your lubricant, just dip it there. And then um, just remove the oxygen delivery device or service um, from the patient because you don't want a suction um, while the catheter is inserted here. So if they have an oxygen, just take it off before you do this procedure. And then um, just insert the catheter. Um, if you're using the nasopharyngeal, um airway you would like to advance the tube between five to six inches to the pharynx so just advance it just make sure that you have uh, proper lubrication that way it's more um, comfortable for the patient and then um, once you reach that you would like to um, apply some suction intermittently so there is like a u uh, a y um a white port so you just like occlude that intermittently on and off and then um, just use your thumb to occlude that one the non-dominant hand will be occluding that so um, after that you would like to gently rotate it um, when you're doing this that way you would get all the contents um, the mucus in the patient's um, airway and um, it's more um, it is also more comfortable for them when you're rotating it um, but you don't want to suction um, between you only want to suction the the greatest is 10 to 15 seconds you don't want to do it more than that because otherwise you're going to create some you know hyperventilation or hypoxemia so just um, be careful on that one and then um, after doing that you can do this about two to three times and then um, just re replace the oxygen um, delivering service um, is if needed um, when you're taking the suction out and then um, just allow about between 30 to 30 seconds to one minute um, interval before doing this again if you could hear the patient's breathing um, a little bit better but there's still some mucus there you would like to do this again and then um, just wait um, that way you know you would prevent hyperventilation or hypoxemia um, when you're doing this procedure and then after that <clears throat> just make sure that you 
um, you only do this um, like three suction passes, not more than that. And then just alternate the nares if needed. Um, that way, it's more comfortable for the patient because um, sometimes, um, you know, it gets really irritated. You don't want to just put it on that nares and then just alternate it as much as possible. Then after you suction, everything is cleared as far as, um, you know, you can hear the breathing. You could auscultate and verify that the breathing is cleared. Um, um, you would like to take off your gloves. So from your um, dominant hand, you would like to take off your gloves and just make sure that you take also the tubing with your um, sterile gloves um, upside down and then just take it and then discard it in a proper receptacle. And then um, just turn the suction off once you're done with that. And then just, um, you know, put in the, um, put in the necessary um, oxygen if needed. Um, and then take off your PPE. And then just reassess the respiratory status of the patient. Just get your um, stethoscope and then auscultate their lungs and see if they're cleared with their airways. And then, um, you know, check on their O2 stat. Um, and also the lung sounds and, you know, check the respiratory rate if they have, um, you know, better um, effort when they're um, doing this, their chest, you would like to check that one. Um, and then, you know, you can also ask the patient if they're feeling better. And then just remove all the additional PPE once you're doing it, once you did done this procedure. And then just evaluate again, check with the patient and see if they're um, you know breathing better and then document all your findings um, all the the necessary equipment that you use the sizes of the tube um, the date the time and um, just do your proper documentation which side of the near or the throat or the um, oropharynx that you use so if you're going to be using the oropharynx um, just make sure um, you would like to do it on the nasopharynx first before you switch it over to the oropharynx because um, you don't want to cross contaminate because there's more bacteria in the mouth than the nose. So, you know, just um, make sure that all your considerations are also written as well and um, just verify everything, document everything, and then, um, you know, just verify that the patient already um, has a better airway and um, they're breathing clearly. Thank you, and that's all for my um, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal um, suctioning for the airway. Thank you, and have a good day.